hell are you going? <sighs> Bugged if I know. No. No, I decided no, I would go. I was a little bit apprehensive. Probably five years ago, I wouldn't have gone. But I think, no, I think I can handle it today. It's a good day. It's a good day. setting movie for Lauren when she doesn't eat all the popcorn. <laughs> oh no, I'm just doing a video of us being a blubbering oh. mess, although you're fine. Oh no, I'm pretty good. <laughs> How are you going, Bella? <laughs> We're going. Uh, We're just going to go and have a wine now. Yeah, Granted, let's sorrow. get drunk. I didn't get my glass of wine, but I do get to have one liter of glycoprep today. Mm. When you have cystic fibrosis, your bowels can block up. Even though I do take medication every day, sometimes it's just not gonna work. So I need to have a liter of this magical stuff, which just clears me out. And if you leave it and don't treat it, you can have a bowel obstruction, which is so bloody painful. But regardless of whether you have cystic fibrosis or not, I think everybody should have a glycoprep day, even if that is just a metaphorical day, to get rid of the shit in your life. Cheers to that. So yesterday I went and saw the Cystic Fibrosis movie Fat Feet Apart and I liked it. <coughs> <coughs> so basically it is the first mainstream Cystic Fibrosis film and it's in the genre of a sick teen drama with two CFers who fall in love but they can't be together because of cross infection. Because people with cystic fibrosis carry different bugs, bacteria, fungus, infections, and we can pass them on to each other which could potentially be fatal. I thought the depiction of cystic fibrosis in this film was pretty bloody spot on, even though there were some moments where you're like, yeah, okay, Hollywood. I think this is a huge thing to happen to the cystic fibrosis community. It is bringing this stupid illness and it's showing the world what people with cystic fibrosis go through each day and also just to bring awareness to the actual illness itself because there's so many people out there who still don't know what cystic fibrosis is. Growing up with cystic fibrosis in the 90s was so isolating and if we had a movie like this oh my gosh I I I think little Lauren's mind would have exploded. So this kind of got me thinking, what if this movie was based in the 90s or set in the 90s? What would be the differences between then and now? Well, for starters, they'd probably both be dead. Mm, I really wish that that was a joke. In the 90s, life expectancy wasn't as good as it is now. I don't know, maybe they would still be here. I don't know. I know I've just scraped in there going on new trials and treatments. If I was born a year before, definitely would not be here right now. In the movie, we see them doing their physio, which is a vest that goes on and vibrates so that they can bring up the mucus that they have. Well, uh, back in my day, we used to have this really ultra heavy physio table and we'd set it up in the living room put it on an angle, I'd have to lay on it in different positions, and one of my parents would do percussion, which is basically bashing me on the back, or the sides, or the front, to get up the mucus. Fun fact, this is why my mum thinks her breasts are still so perky. Another treatment for physio and clearance in the 90s was a thing called the pyripet. Now this is a pressured mask that you would breathe into to once again help bring up the mucus. And they actually discovered this by fighter pilots because when they would go up in the air and wear those big masks on their faces, they found that they would cough up phlegm afterwards. We didn't have all these fancy technology vibrating vests. I also saw some wireless nebulizers in the film. Um, yeah, we did not have any of that. The main CF Estella in the movie was a vlogger. She would post up videos to YouTube and Will, the other CF, would watch them online. And how they got to know each other over time was through FaceTime. Well, 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 in the 90s, we did not have the thing called the internet. If we wanted to talk to somebody else in the hospital, we'd have to get their room number. Then we'd have a phone next to us on the bed and we could call them on that. We did not have the wonderful thing of YouTube. Our form of entertainment was a massive starlight machine. That's what we called it. And it was a little screen with a VHS player. So you would have to go and get a movie from either the local video shop or you would go to the play therapist to get their strict select of G-rated movies and it also had a Nintendo 64 so if you wanted to have one of these monstrosities in your room you're only allowed it for two hours at a time and you'd have to go to the nurse's desk and book it in with them because there's only two of them for the entire ward. Speaking of, um, even though mobile phones were around in the 90s 
not many people had them. Now one of the main characters, Stella, is on the double lung transplant list and she has her mobile phone for them to call her when her new lungs come. Well back in the day we had pages for the team to call you if your lungs arrived and that pager would only go off if there was an organ for you. It was used for nothing else. But in the 90s uh, transplant was still not a really common treatment to have and it was really scary. So the big plot to the movie is cross-infection. Stella and Will, two CFers, cannot be within six feet of each other because they can contract each other's bugs, viruses, fungus, etc. Well, if this movie was made in the 90s, those two would be all over each other. I mean, they'd probably die, but they would be all over each other because cross-infection wasn't a thing. We didn't know any different. We thought we could all hang out together. We used to have cystic fibrosis camps. That's when all the CFers would go away together, just like the camp qualities, and in the hospital, CFs would be sharing rooms with each other. It wasn't until the mid 90s that cross infection came through. It was about 96 when I was told I wasn't allowed to hang out with other people with CF because of this thing called cross infection. And now it's just a common practice. So yeah, it was super new and people had already formed friendships. So it was um, a bit of a transition and was still a very new thing. And finally, there was no mention of smoking. I mean, you would think, yeah, duh, Lauren, it's in a hospital. You probably didn't even think about it because there was no shitty reference to smoking because our main character didn't put a cigarette between his lips, but didn't light it because it was a measure for. Hashtag five feet apart is better than faulting our stars. Also, our guys didn't make out in Anne Frank's house. I'm just saying. But in all seriousness, back in the 90s, the smoking etiquette was completely different to what it is now. My parents had to put up a sign on our front door that said no smoking around baby because people would actually do that. So thank goodness the smoking etiquette is a lot better these days to the point where it's not even referred to in movies. So all in all, there would have been a few differences if this movie was made in the 90s compared to now, but the constant is that CF is an insidious, disgusting illness and it is a terrible thing to live with day to day. And there is still no cure. Even though life expectancy is better, it's still fatal. And if I'm being completely honest, I still have to pinch myself that I am still alive at 28 years old. All in all, I thought this movie did a fantastic job of representing what it's like to live with cystic fibrosis. It covers a lot of different issues in the short span of time. And I do know that it has had some hate from some of the CF community. I personally think it's awesome that there is something out there that uh, may even challenge the way people relate to cystic fibrosis. It might not be this thing that they've heard of. They might think, oh, I understand a bit more about that now because I saw that movie. And if anything, it felt like a massive trip down memory lane for me because some of my best memories were uh, as a teenager in the hospital. If you don't have CF, please go and watch this movie. If you do have CF, think about it. it it's very confronting to watch your life reflected to you, I guess. But regardless, remember you're not alone and I'm sending my love.